Hey guys, it's Carl Brown here. Today we're going to finally take a full in-depth look at my arrangement for Pixed Dog Guitar of the Bach Prelude in D minor. Um, so this one is a challenge. The great thing arranging it for pick style guitar, because it's usually played on the classical guitar uh, for finger style, um, but for pick style guitar, it's mostly 98% one picking pattern. So um, the right hand is pretty easy to understand. What I'm really going to take you through here is all the different fingerings that I'm using uh, throughout the chord shapes. And those are the, the, the hardest things to get down. Now, I am providing a tab with this, so if you see the link in the description, that'll take you to the page where you can download the tab for free. Um, and I recommend doing that before following along with this lesson um, because it's going to help you um, immensely because I'm not going to go so note for note on it because of the fact that you're going to have a tab that you can be able to look at. All right, so please, if you're not subscribed to the channel, please do and ring that little notification bell so you'll see whenever I release a new video lesson. All right, so let's uh, dive in here. Now, there's debate on whether this thing was originally written for a lute or a lute harpsichord. Um, it was originally in C minor, but it's always pretty much played in D minor on the guitar, so it's been um, uh, moved into a key that's a lot easier to play. So, let's start here with this opening lick here. So, now this gives me an opportunity to, to introduce the picking pattern that you're going to be playing for most of the track. So, you have a couple of options in how you can pick it. Or if you're a straight alternate picker and you want to alternate pick the whole thing, you can do it that way. Um, I personally don't play it that way. Um, that'll give you a more kind of a, a more percussive sound if you want to alternate pick through the whole thing. The way I do it is I use um, a more economical approach, what I call a chordal picking. I'm always picking in the neck, the direction of the next string that I'm going to uh, pick. So for this opening pattern, so, so let me work you through that. Down, 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 up, up. So just do that. So you can see I'm always going in the direction of the next string I'm going to pick. So then I can do a downstroke on the G string, then an up on the B, and then another upstroke on the G. So, so far we have this. Now, hopefully you're following along with the tablature there, so you'll see this is just the very first measure. And then we do this little moving bass line that we keep having in it. So that's going to be a down on the D string, up on the G, and then a down on the A string, and then an up on the G. So you can see how I'm... So that's the rule here. I'm always picking... Now when you do that, it's going to create a lot smoother sound with the picking pattern. So I recommend playing it like that. That's how you'll see me play it throughout the piece. Um, and I'll show you the little instances where we break away from that pattern. It only happens a couple times. Um, now, that pattern doesn't always happen on those exact same strings, though. But it's the same general picking motions. Down, 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 up, up, down, up, down, down, up, you know, whatever. I'm not going to call it out for you. You'll see that written there, though, in the uh, very first. You'll see the little picking indications in that first measure. And throughout the tab, I'll put the picking indications when that kind of changes. All right, so that first measure, you see how I'm playing that just like this kind of standard minor triad shape. And I'm trying to keep the notes there ringing and let the bass note ring and then I come over and grab with those two fingers. The middle finger and then just repeat it. Alright, so uh, now when I'm letting the bass notes ring, you'll see most scores for this music, you cut the uh, you let the you mute the bass note after um, the first beat. Um, I'm not going to be doing that throughout this piece, as you can see from the performance piece. Uh, and throughout time, the classical guitar players will either let it ring, or some of them cut it off. Uh, I, I like the sound that would kind of ring out a little bit, especially for this, what we're doing here. So it makes it very difficult to mute if you're not playing finger style. So let's just let it ring. All right, next shape. 
So the fingering I'm using here is like a, it's a kind of a, another minor shape, and then you can see I'm using a pinky there on the B string, so I can reach now the third finger to that eight, and then uh, five down on that D. Repeat. All right, now we're gonna jump down here. Now this is where there's gonna be a lot of times in this song that you're gonna to want to walk into the chorus, is what I call it. Now what that means is you don't have to grab the whole chord shape at the same time. So when we're coming from this chord, you don't have to jump to this chord. It's kind of a, a difficult jump. Instead, you get that open, you remember we're picking across the strings. So, so that initial arpeggio, Put the fingers down as they need to be heard. So I have that open D string allows me to come down here. Then I lay there the sixth fret on the G, fifth fret on the B, and then first fret on the high E. So we have this. All right, now here it changes a little bit the picking pattern because we have to. It's, the, it's just a, how we're trans. We have to transition to get those bass notes. So I'm shifting down here, third fret on the G, second fret on the B, and then that fifth fret on the D, and then back to the second fret on the B. And then we have this other section here that's based on a D minor on top with kind of a descending bass line um, beneath it. And the way you're gonna wanna play this is kind of to gradually increase the dynamics as you go. So start light. gradually build up and then dramatic it's a cool chord all right so now that bass line I'm just holding the same so I now you see I switched to a bar there in order to get this top note and that note on the fifth string there so See that right there? Now that's uh, measure nine. And you don't have to actually do the full bar. You can just play that note, the, the tip of your finger there on the A string, and then just the bottom. So you can see the notes in the middle are muted. So I just have the high E and the fifth string. So it's, it's just kind of arcing that finger. So you get kind of both ends of it, and that's it. It's a lot more comfortable way to do it. Open A string, we made it all the way down there. And then we work ourselves all the way down to this G sharp. Now this is one of those chords you're gonna walk into, you're gonna want to. It's you know fourth fret there on the low E, and then pinky on the fourth fret of the G, second fret there on I mean second finger of the middle finger playing the third fret on the B, you can see on the tab, and then all the way over reaching that first fret. That is painful. Now right here, the second time plugging through this, there's a slight change. Like that. So you'll see that in the tab, and then and then it gets to this very super cool chord. So that was F, that was um, measures 13 and 14. So like I said, I'm not breaking this down note for note like I usually do because you have a full tab that you should make sure you grab first. Um, I'm just, when I'm coming up to certain areas that have kind of odd fingerings that I think I, I've played this enough that I've kind of worked out some interesting ways that are a little bit easier to play it. Uh, I'm, that's what I'm really kind of uh, showing you here. Now we get to good old measure 15 which is the one part of this transcription which is very difficult for a guitar and almost it might be impossible for some guitar players but I'm going to give you an option to play it. This is that monster stretch. So what I'm doing here is I'm playing the first fret on the low E string and then I'm using my pinky to bar the fifth fret on the G, B, and the high E. High e. Now I, I realize not everybody's gonna have 
a hand that can do that. But all you have to do, it doesn't sound quite as good, that's why I'm playing it down here. Uh, I'm playing mine down here, but you can just move this up an octave. So that is third fret. So replace that first fret there on the low E with the third fret on the D string. You can still do it with a bar, or now you can just play all three fingers. You don't have to do a bar even. And then just move from there. So that part, when I go into that, if you want to attempt the stretch, I lay this down first, and then I lay the pinky down, and literally I just extend it and just mash it down. It doesn't need to be that. Just like a like the piece of meat that it is. That's all you really want to think about. And then hold your breath and hope to get through it. All right, so, all right, from there we go up to, you get a jump up. So this is a little bit different here. You're playing this top raisin. So it's like the open D, the fourth fret, I kind of jumped back and grabbed it with my ring finger and then the second fret there on the A. And then we work our way up into this very, another section where you kind of want to build the dynamics as you go up. You get to this. Slowly building. So when you get up top, that's like the most, the, the loudest part of the entire piece, really. And then you slowly decrease the volume as you go. All right, so now the fingerings are working my way up through that, that section. Pretty standard here. And here I'm doing a bar at the fifth fret across the, uh, the uh, G, B, and the high E. And then that's got to reach over and grab the third fret of the A string, go back to that G with the pick, and then the eighth fret on the low E. So that's kind of a stretch. And then, now that one's not that hard of a chord to play, it's just that you gotta watch on this, you gotta grab that bass note, and then let go of it, so you get the open D. So I this. So I, I think all of these sound the best when you can let these notes just ring as much as possible before you have to switch to the new chord. And then all the way up to the top one. Now this one's tough because you gotta be really kind of digging in with the pick. And then the bass line there is the ninth fret on the D and then the eleventh fret on the A. And then you work your way back down. Now the way I play this, I'm playing that with a, now I, I'm kind of, and the reason why I'm using my pinky here is I got a bar here at the eighth fret on the G across to the high E string. And I'm using the 10th fret there. You can see, I'm, uh, uh, using my pinky and then I'm gonna that allows me to have this uh, ring finger available to jump down and grab that which is seven there on the D eight on the G and then nine on the A with the pinky back to that eight so it is so I got that E ring in there and then so this one right here pretty easy up top but when we do the bass line that index finger and then that bottom note's gonna be taken by moving that um, uh, middle finger over. And then we kinda have the same thing we did up here. So the kinda same thing we did at the eighth fret, now it's at the fifth fret. And then this. So that's like a minor shape, but it's with these three fingers, which makes it much more difficult to play, of course. Um, so, open E there, fourth fret with my ring finger, that third fret with my uh, middle finger, and then the pinky there at the high E string, fifth fret. And then, 
that the reason why we're doing that is because we need the index finger to play that note, the little bass line coming up. And then we saw that at the beginning of this phrase, and then so we're here now. So that's one. Not, not too hard to understand. And next comes down to the bass line, and then the second note is the pinky. So it, All right, so you're working your way all the way down through that pattern there. So I'm gonna open it up right here. We'll get pretty easy to. Now another big stretch. Now you're gonna want to walk into this. It sounds killer though. So I'm hitting the low E string, the low E open allows me to jump up and grab that seventh fret there, the um, D string, fourth fret of the uh, G, and then the third fret of the um, B string. So I pick through that, then, so, so, so I shift it back there, so I can do that little bass line. So that first one, now back up. Now this one's not as bad of a stretch. Okay, so. And then, so this one now has the A in the bass. And now we uh, change up the picking a little bit. So that was kind of just alternate picking across strings. You can alter pick the whole thing though. But I do a little bit of a little bit of economy picking there. And then I jump into a bar here for the second half of it. Alright, so we have this. Once again, hopefully you have the tablature in front of you and you're following along because I know I'm not calling out the notes themselves too much. I'm just trying to show you the best way to probably play it. And then we're pretty self-explanatory. Saw that earlier, and that resolves down to this A. And that's just a bar there. And then I, the first bass note is played with the uh, pinky, and then this last one is the, uh, the ring finger on the seventh fret there of the A. And then back to this. saw that chord in the intro and then we're going to go to a D minor chord here and then uh, but we're not going to repeat that there we switch to this which is just a bar there at the first fret with the um, across those top three strings and the um, third fret there on the B So that part when you're kind of really building that tension there, um, it's good to kind of, I like to build it up a little bit. And then that takes us to the end of the track. All right, so after building up out of this part, it's nice. So that's a really cool ending because it incorporates you know a lot of open strings around fretted notes higher up the neck, so it kind of gives it a cool effect. Um, so I play that, and then I shift this over to the to the same two notes that we're holding down the fourth, uh, I mean the D and the G string. 
Now move over to the B and the G. Open B string. That gives you time to come up. Grab this G sharp and then end it with an A major chord, which is just that bar there. All right, so it is a, a great piece to kind of work on your dynamic control. Um, it's got some really cool harmonies in it, and it's got some huge stretches. So um, it's a great workout. It's a great picking workout because it has that repeated picking pattern. Um, it's almost like an etude for the right hand because you, get, you really get to work on all that string crossing stuff and the chordal picking and keeping the notes ringing um, along with some very challenging left hand maneuvers. Um, it's definitely not something if you're a beginner you want to jump on immediately. Uh, you take your time for this kind of stuff. All right, but I hope you enjoyed it. It's a beautiful track, and hopefully it'll help you impress your friends. All right, see you again soon for guitarlessons365.com.